Hello, I'm Andy Oakley, the Deputy Leader of the One New Zealand Party, a party that you'll be hearing much more of as we prepare to launch in the coming months. Recently, the Minister of Māori Development, Nanaia Mahuta, signed a $9 million reconciliation package for the people of Parihaka. Now, the One New Zealand Party find the proposed $9 million of public funding being earmarked for the Trust to be paramount to another act of treason by this and previous governments. Not only is the version of history in the deed factually incorrect, it's been promoted to further divide New Zealanders into opposing race-based groupings. The use of words such as Holocaust and invasion in reference to the interaction between people who were basically trying to recapture lands that didn't belong to them in the then government is also factually incorrect. It's divisive and an affront to the people throughout history who have suffered these events in reality. The Minister of Māori Development, Nanaia Mahuta, stated, in the, after in the aftermath of the invasion, res residents were forcibly evicted, unjustly imprisoned, their leaders arrested and held without trial. Homes and sacred buildings were desecrated rapes were committed, and a regime imposed that deprived owners of control and ownership of their land. The Minister Mahuta wasn't telling the truth. And our government's reaction to it, handing over $9 million to the descendants and hangers-on of uh, people who've grown up in middle-class New Zealand, is entirely inappropriate. A truthful account of the behaviour of the tribes in Taranaki is as follows. The first invasion of Taranaki was in 1826 by the Waikato tribes, of which incidentally the minister Mahuta is a tribal member of. So it was her tribe who massacred the Taranaki people during the intertribal wars. The remaining people who didn't die were either enslaved by Waikato or fled to Wellington. After assisting to exterminate the original Ngāti Ira people of Wellington and Porua in 1835, about 900 of the Taranaki people living in Wellington invaded the Chap Chatham Islands, where they massacred the Moriori. Of approximately 1,600 Moriori, 100 survived, to be farmed for food over the next few years. Now, these two events could perhaps be called holocausts. By 1840, when there were only about 150 people living in the whole region of Taranaki, the authorities began purchasing land from willing sellers. As a result of the treaty and the ending of slavery, many of the estranged people of Taranaki took the opportunity to return and try to reclaim lands which, under tribal customs, they had forfeited when conquered by the Waikato tribes. Wurumu Kingi and some of his fellow Taranaki tribesmen violated the treaty when they made an armed rebellion against the Crown. In a 12-month period between 1860 and 1861, 177 settlers' farms were destroyed and numerous mass burnings of settlers' livestock took place. As a result of these atrocities, there were land confiscations. Sir Apirana Nata stated that these uh, confiscations were not a breach of the treaty. In fact, under the old system of Utu, their fate would have been much worse. In 1864, self-appointed prophet and cult leader Tefiti adopted a system of pacifism using the symbol of the white feather. The same symbol the pacifist Moriori used before Tefiti's tribesmen exterminated them by impaling them to the beach. Tefiti, Tefiti squatted on Crown-owned land, which later became known as Parihaka, and proceeded to be evasive, obstructive, and downright belligerent. Despite being told to move on to lands that had been set aside for them, they ignored all efforts to communicate while remaining for the next 14 years on land that had been confiscated from the rebels. They stole horses, 
harassed uh, storekeepers. They pulled down newly built houses, uh, storehouses and extracted tolls from in innocent travellers. Over those 14 years, members of the European-hating extremists, Hau Hau or uh, Pai Mariri, moved in. Weapons were stockpiled and living conditions worsened. In September 1878, Hiroki, a well-known Māori fugitive, murdered John McLean, a cook to one of the survey parties, and in defiance, Te Fiti refused to hand him over. After all diplomatic efforts had been exhausted, the government decided in the interest of uh, peace in the district to move the squatters on. On the 5th of the November 1881, 959 volunteers and 630 armed constabulary rode into the makeshift town, arrested the vandals and murderers and dismantled what was left. Not a single injury was reported. This was the so-called invasion of Parihaka. So yes, as Mahuta suggested, the illegal squatters at Parihaka were evicted, as they should have been, and they would be again today. They were moved on peace peacefully by a mixture of volunteers and armed constabulary. Hardly an invasion, and yet a, a definitely a very strong show of force. This show of force was to dissuade Defiti from using any of the 250 or so rifles found in the grounds, and it worked. The constabulary were met by, Pari, uh, by Parihaka children holding flowers. And what of the Minister of Māori Development, Mahuta, telling the country that there were rapes committed at Parihaka? She states this as if there'd been trials and people were convicted. Yet there's no evidence that any rapes took place and no one was charged with rape. As a Minister of the Crown, this is simply not good enough. The One New Zealand Party called for her to either provide the proof that anyone was raped or resign. How can a minister forge Māori development by further perpetuating the victim mentality that is suffocating Māori communities, in particular the Māori youth, who are continuously told they are imprisoned in a future of hopelessness, underachievement, and societal overrepresentation in all of the negative indicators. And secondly, it is entrenching false guilt syndrome on non-Māori children as they are taught these lies at all levels of our education system and now by government ministers such as Mahuta. This attempt to force a sense of guilt onto children for past events, largely wrongly interpreted, interpreted uh, past events is harmful to both those individual children and also to the health of our future society and culture. The One New Zealand Party will commit to redressing the false history being taught in our schools and remove the divisive racial separatism from all levels of our society. Parihaka is a symbol of the racial division being posed, imposed on our society and shoved forcibly down the throats of the public by our own leaders. I've been Andy Oakley. Noho oro mai.